Alrighty, welcome everybody back to the Roseland Exchange. It's me, Roseland. And today we are um, going to be looking at a new project, new series on this channel. And um, yeah, so we're just going to be heading there in, in a hot second while I explain uh, exactly what we'll be, we'll be doing. We are going to Plateau Station on the server. And uh, we're going to be trying to build a drum machine with which to make music. This, uh, this should be pretty interesting as one of the guys on the server is a uh, kind of music creator. And, um, and he will probably be helping me out with some of the programming methods and strategies. Um, it's going to be reasonably close to spawn. That's our spawn area. And the design itself is going to be one of the bigger things I've ever really designed to be useful. I'll be focusing on uh, giving it uh, the full render distance treatment. So it'll be about uh, 12 chunks in radius or diameter, I think. And it'll be over here off to the right. You can see a, s a little bit of a testing area that we have down underneath the water, down over there. Place is fun. Um, but uh, but this machine we've kind of been uh, testing out and figuring out some of the parts for over in the lab over in that direction. So I'll be uh, bringing y'all along on this ride and keeping you updated on how it goes. Here we are approaching the actual uh, train station that I built for it. Um, this is the three-way intersection system that I showed off in the first video, and um, well, there's a couple, a little bit of modification as I got access to some new, new redstone ideas. And we're gonna head off over here. This actual station is not built yet, but I'll probably give you all a little bit of a tutorial on how I build. Um, end of line stations but the idea is that there will be a staircase to go down here a pathway out over the water and then the front of the building it will be right here as you can see it's relatively big um the actual render distance being set to twelve chunks for the server and I built it on top of an ocean monument because you know people are gonna be spending a lot of time here making songs and different things like that and eventually I'd like to build a farm out of for some guardians so here you can see the chunk loading boundaries just on all the edges and yeah this is about the area that we're gonna be building on the front of it is going to be over on that side where we just entered from and I'm thinking of treating this central point which is conveniently right on top of the Guardian Farm, um, or future Guardian Farm, as the kind of central listening point. Now, since Minecraft has uh, location-based audio, there will be more quiet tracks that are going to be along the outside, and the more melody-focused tracks are going to be built around here. Um, I'm thinking of designing this um, in the image of a, a kind of a cathedral, a pretty large building with pillars and a variety of layers um, which I think will uh, be pretty conducive to to you know making some music so yeah I'll come back with an updated bit all right so what's uh, relatively interesting about this build is that we've been doing our redstone designs um, ahead of time so uh, that's what I'm gonna show you all right now the lab where I filmed the first video is right over here. Here are the uh, the old designs for that T intersection. And here is what we've been working on. So you can see there's it's a, it's a little bit of a mess. Here we have the melody chains that we're going to be using. Uh, this over here is a bit of a memory unit for creating loops and choosing when we want a loop to go on a particular cycle. That's nice because you can use this to store memory and uh, it has an input for the for the rhythm clock 
an output for the actual drum lines, and then a reset line that will pump everything out of this chest back up and over to reset the song whenever it's over with. What we have over here is a bit of a convoluted counting system. This is just a couple of different T flip flops that I was trying to mess with. Um, we're currently using a repeater clock because that seems to better line up with the actual timing, which we're using repeaters for on the drum lines. And this is a hopper clock that has a dispenser on one side that actually works like a counter. So in this chest, we can choose the number of repeats we want on the clock, in this case four, and then we set our delay so that a new signal comes out of this clock every time the, the song is played, or the line is played. And that means that whenever we press the button to start the song, it'll play only four times. And you can see over here it turned off. So yeah, that's a pretty useful system. I'll fire it up again so we can watch the counting system at work. <clears throat> and that's as simple as sending a signal here to kick an item out. And there you go, resets, and it's ready to go again. Now, what I have actually done with the way this counter works is that this little reset line right here takes the signal that is usually going to be locking a hopper here. Um, it takes that signal and actually sends a reset to this RS neural latch. So, or T flip flop, not RS neural latch. Um, so the song actually stops and then it doesn't reset. If we don't have this, then it gets a little bit crazy. Because it'll just keep on going, but it's time is going to be funky. Music. As you can see, it uh, it reset and it's just going to keep on running now in a constant loop. So the T flip flop idea also came from. Uh, uh, let's see how we're going to reset this. We're just going to do that. Okay. Uh, the T flip flop idea also came from a previous iteration of this that used one of these hopper clocks in the place of this clock. So we actually had two of these clocks next to each other. Um, but it turns out that this one needs time to reset. So for example, you're gonna run 16 loops or 32. It's gonna take a while for the hopper to dump all the items back into the dropper. And uh, yeah, that's what we're currently looking at. This is, these are some tileable examples. This one's from Exumavoid. This is a flat version of the Etho hopper clock. Um, this is just replacing one of the hoppers with a dropper. Uh, yeah. Uh, over here, I was contemplating the way the actual player can interact with this, right? Um, because this is the block that you're actually going to be interacting with to add or remove uh, counts from the song, but that's smack dab in the middle of a bunch of redstone. So how do I make this a block that you can actually interact with? So we found a way to lift it up and still get the inputs from the clock into the dropper, still get the readings out of both the hopper and the dropper with the comparators, which can read through blocks, and still get our output from this redstone block out into the actual system. So this is an input, this is an output, and it's all relatively contained in a clean space. We can just clean it up in a variety of ways with a variety of blocks. The most important thing is that you can't actually have a block on top of that hopper, unless it's a transparent block, which might be something I still take advantage of. But even this block can be covered up, and the only way that you can see that this system is working is because of this redstone block back here. So it's a, it's a clean-ish design. It'll at least do the job while we're uh, in the preliminary phases of design for this thing. So yeah. I'll come back with an update in a bit. Alrighty, so here's an update on how the uh, the giant music building is going. Uh, currently we have uh, 
that we've made some progress on a little bit of a train station for us to arrive in uh, when we're on our way here. And uh, a friend, and, friend of mine and, and I were working uh, a little bit last night on uh, sketching out the, uh, the size and shape of the building. It, uh, it's a pretty decent, uh, decent thing, and as you get down, the scale really starts to, uh, to stand out. We have this pretty big plaza here, and off to the left we can see the uh, the actual building, which is going to be themed after a cathedral. But uh, yeah, we have a pretty big uh, big plaza here sketched out. As you approach, there will be towers in the corners of the plaza. I know circles don't have corners, but we'll we'll put towers there, and uh, we have our little bit of an entryway. Now these aren't the edges of the building, as you can see way out there. We have target blocks that are going to be the center point of some bigger towers that actually go up much higher. And our entry point here is going to be a three-wide hipster uh, piston door, which will be fun, made with uh, some colored concrete probably, and uh, and this is our floor level where we have the internal support structure for the actual building. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of where we're at right now. We're just in laying out, making some lines. This central portion right here is going to have a bit of a glass floor so you can look down into the, uh, into the water temple below, which is uh, it's gonna be interesting, I think. And, uh, and yeah, this is our central point. This floor is going to be elevated, so we have that marked out. At least the beginnings of it being marked out. And, uh, and yeah, I'll come back for an update in, uh, once we've made some progress. Okay, so after spending a little while thinking about uh, the, uh, the build itself and how it's supposed to be laid out, I, um, I realized that uh, I can make a little bit of a mock-up of the building. Uh, this isn't quite the right orientation. The front will be like this. But uh, this is more closely shaped to what we are trying to do. Um, and uh, that's really all we have time for today. The height of the central tower is going to be triple that of the rooms on the wings, and then the central nave is going to be double height of the wings, along with the two wings on either side, one of which will come out over here. And uh, we will have uh, kind of built-in buttresses to hold up those tall portions in the middle that are resting down on the uh, exterior uh, rooms, where we're going to have uh, smaller songs being built. And, uh, and yeah. Our little outer plaza is going to be out here, and, uh, and that's the plan. So I uh, appreciate y'all sticking around, and uh, and I'll be seeing you on the next uh, next video, where hopefully we'll start making some more progress on this uh, main plaza and the. Uh, adjoining uh, bell towers and front facade of the building. So thank you very much, and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye.